let me share with you a tricky question which tests your analytical skills. How many triangles do you see in the picture? And you have triangle presented with smaller triangles inside. And you have a picture presented on the left as well as four possible choices. Choice A, 9. Choice B, 13. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 15. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you come up with the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Let me walk you through the process of counting triangles. First, we include the largest outside triangle. Second, we include smaller triangles. Because large triangle was divided into four, we include smaller triangles, which are displayed here as two, and then three. Then we include each one of the very small triangles. Four, five, six, seven. Then eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And as a last step, we include remaining smaller triangles that have not been counted in the first place. Twelve, and then thirteen. So the correct answer is one plus four plus two by four, which is equal thirteen. So the correct choice here is choice B, thirteen. And the key to answer this question is to make sure you did not miss any of the triangles shown in the picture. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions on the test. Some of you might find this question tricky, but regardless of whether you can solve it or not on your own, you will be excited to learn the solution to this real-life assessment test question. Here's the question. Determine the missing part and you are presented with the 3 by 3 square, which has arrows pointing in different directions. In the middle of the square, you have the X sign, and one of the squares is missing the arrow, and you have four different choices. Choice A, arrow pointing in the bottom left corner. Choice B, arrow pointing in the bottom right corner. Choice C, arrow pointing left. And choice D, arrow pointing in the upper right corner. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. So did you determine the missing part? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As usual, to determine the next item in the sequence, we have to look for the patterns. And as you can see, both rows and columns have a sequence. So if you look at the bottom row, you see that the arrow points in the bottom right corner, then in the upper right corner, then in the upper left corner. So that is the sequence. It rotates counterclockwise. You see that the arrow go from pointing to the upper left corner, then to the upper right corner, and then to the bottom right corner. You see that the arrow pointing rotates clockwise. And the missing piece in the middle is designed to confuse you. This is the missing piece. It would help you if there would be an actual arrow, but it does not exist. So what you see here is that this middle piece was put in place to confuse you and to show that there is no sequence in the middle row. So the sequence for the missing part would have to be reestablished from the right column. So we have arrow in the upper right box pointing to the upper left corner. The next one would be pointing to the bottom left corner. And then the following one would be pointing to the bottom right corner. You see that this particular arrow in its sequence moves counterclockwise as well. Let's recap. Notice that all arrows follow the sequence. Both rows and columns have sequences, something to look for, and each arrow points to the corners and is rotating either counterclockwise or clockwise. So the missing part involves finding the arrow that matches the pattern. The correct choice here is choice A, arrow pointing in the bottom left corner. Hopefully you've nailed this question, and now know how to answer these types of questions on the test. Let's review the question, which tests your verbal reasoning skills. Choose the missing letters from below to form a word using all letters presented. And you have a 3 by 3 box, which has three letters missing. What you need to do, you need to try to form a word, and to form it, populate these three missing letters from four choices presented. Choice A, A-R-N. Choice B, R-D-N. Choice C, I-A-M and choice D, H-O-W. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? 
Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. So what we know, based on the instruction in the question, is that the word has nine letters. Typically, letters in the sequence flow to form a word in these types of questions. So in this particular question, you need to start in the upper left corner and then flow from left to right, then from top to bottom, from right to left, and again into the middle row. And once you do that, you will see that the word president can be formed. So the missing letters are R, D, N. And the correct choice here is choice B, R, D, N. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. And here is the question you can try to solve on your own. Please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video and I'll give you my feedback. Which of the following completes the missing part of the box? You are presented with 2x2 two two box on the left. Each section of the box contains different set of figures of different colors. And one box in the bottom right corner has a question mark. This is the box that you need to figure out. You have four different choices. All seem to be valid answers. Feel free to pause this video and try to solve this challenge on your own. Just remember, always look for patterns. And if you have figured out the answer, feel free to pause the answer and your rationale in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. I'm also planning to post a detailed answer to this question in my future videos. So make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic where I'm planning to post the answer to this particular question. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's an interesting question from the real test. I have confidence that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. Choose which of the following comes next in the sequence. And you're presented with the sequence of objects. Take a close look at the sequence and try to determine which one of the choices A, B, C, or D comes next in the sequence. Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the solution together. When we look at the original items presented in the sequence, you see that the green circle presented in every box. Another pattern that we see here is that items are added incrementally. For example, first square contains two objects, one of which is green circle. Second square contains green circle and triangle and square. In the third box, you see that all original items are present and we have an additional yellow diamond. So we can assume safely that the item that we will pick should have a green circle in the bottom left corner and it should have five items and it should contain all original items present in the first three squares. This leads us to the correct answer in the choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to look for the patterns in the test. But in case you need more questions like this, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Here is the tricky question from the real test, but somehow I have a feeling that you might be able to come up with the answer. What comes next in the sequence? And you have sequence of items. Do, me, so, and then the missing item. And you have four choices to pick from. Choice A, R, E. Choice B, F, A. Choice C, L, A. And choice D, T, I. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. As you might have figured out, the items represent music sequence. And the music sequence is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. If we look at the sequence, we notice that some of the items might be missing. And you see that the Re, Fa, and La are skipped. So the next item in the sequence will be Ti. So the correct answer here is choice D, T. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer these types of questions in the test. Here is the interesting and tricky question from the real test, but somehow I have a feeling that you might come up with the answer on your own. Which of the following comes next in this sequence? You have a sequence of four shapes displayed and fifth shape with the question mark, which you need to pick out of four different choices presented. So choice A, lightning, choice B, sand clock, choice C, hexagon, and choice D, cube. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can come up with the answer together. Before we jump to the answer, 
I want to pinpoint two patterns. One pattern is changing color. The first shape is black, next is gray. Black, gray. So the next one in the sequence would be black, which limits the number of possible choices to A and B. Did this tip help you? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue and get to the correct solution together. In addition to changing color pattern, there is also a pattern of straight lines. You can see that shape 1 has two straight lines on top and the bottom. Triangle has three straight lines. Then the next shape has four straight lines. The following shape has five straight lines. So our next shape in the pattern should be black and also should have six straight lines. So the correct choice here is choice B, sand clock. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own, or if you didn't, learned how you can answer similar questions on the test. I have confidence that you can solve this challenge from the real test. What word can you form using all the letters in the box? And you're presented with the 3x3 three three box, which has following letters. D-E-K-G-L-N-E-W-O. Feel free to pause this video to try to solve it. And if you figured out the answer, feel free to post it in the comment section of this video and I'll give you my feedback. I will also post a detailed answer in my future videos. So make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn about the answer and how to come up with the answers to similar questions on the test. Thanks for participating and good luck. This question is quite tricky, but I would like to show you the solution so we can solve this interesting and tricky question together. Which shape does not belong to the group? And you have four choices of shapes. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue and see how we can solve this challenge and get to the solution together. In this case, shapes can be grouped by number of sides in the shape. For example, you see that all the shapes in the left have six sides. If you count the sides, for example, in this shape, you will see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six. Same with the hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six. And same with the arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the correct answer here is choice A for the pentagon, which only has five sides, one, two, three, four, five. Hopefully you've nailed this question and answered it correctly and now know how to answer similar questions and problems on the test. Some of you might find this question tricky, but regardless of whether you can solve it on your own or not, you will be excited to learn the solution to this real live assessment test question. Find the missing number by imagining how the clock's handle rotates. The start of the sequence will be at nine o'clock and it ends in the middle. You have four different choices. Choice A, 28, choice B, 42, choice C, 14, and choice D, 44. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Before we jump to the solution, I want to pinpoint the sequence. The start of the sequence is at 9 o'clock with the number 9. The next number would be 16, next would be 23, 30, 37, then missing number, and then 51. Now let's jump to the solution. As I already mentioned, we are presented with the clockwise sequence. Following this sequence, we can calculate the difference between the next number and the previous number. For example, in case of 9 and 16, the difference would be 16 minus 9, 7. To calculate the next number, we can also do the difference by subtracting 16 from 23. This is also 7. This makes us think that the sequence might be incrementing next number by 7. If we follow the sequence, we can confirm that that's exactly the case. 23 plus 7 is 30, 30 plus 7 is 37, so the next number that we will calculate would be 37 plus 7, which would be equal 44, which is one of the choices. Let's reaffirm that our calculation is correct by adding 7 to 44. 44 plus 7 is 51, so that's the next number in the center. So the correct answer here is choice D, 44. Hopefully you answered this question correctly, but in case you need more questions or practice problems, 
please make sure to check out my ebook in the description of this video. And here's the question from the real test you can try to solve on your own. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You're presented with the sequence on the left. Sequence contains boxes, and inside of each box there is an arrow pointing in a different direction. You also have four different choices, A, B, C, and D. And among those choices, different boxes with arrows pointing in a different direction. Feel free to pause this video and try this challenge now. If you have figured out the answer, feel free to post the answer and your rationale in the comments and I'll give you my feedback. I will also post a detailed answer in my future video. So make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn about the answer and how to come up with the answers to the similar questions in the test. Thanks for participating and good luck! Let me share with you an interesting question from the test. I have confidence that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. The following expressions are similar except for one. Select one item that does not belong to the group. And you have four items shown on the screen. 200 divided by 40, 2 multiplied by 20, 0 0.2, and 20 out of 100. You need to select one item that does not belong to the group. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. Interesting question, isn't it? All of the expressions have similarity as they all equal 20%. Let's take a look at all of them one by one. Choice A, 40 is a 20% of 200. Choice C, 0 0.2 is already 20%. And choice D, 20 out of 100, is 20% too. Except for 1. Choice B, 2 multiplied by 20, is 40. So it has nothing to do with 20%, especially for the answer. In choice B, 2 multiplied by 40, the answer equals 40, which is different for the 20% answer as we identified it for items A, C, and D. So the correct answer is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the interesting question from the real test. Which of the following shapes does not belong to the group? And you have four different choices and four different shapes, choices A, B, C, and D. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Give yourself about 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge together. As usual, you need to look for similarities. And in this case, similarity is being symmetrical. A shape can be considered symmetrical if it has a central line dividing both sides to show the same appearance. And shape B in this case is not symmetrical. So the correct choice here is choice B. This shape is not symmetrical. Hopefully you've nailed this question, but in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment tests faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have a community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.